Shall we all stand as we sing five two two? Five two two. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' plan and righteousness. <clears throat> My hope is Lord, have 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings. We thank you for life. Thank you for hope. And now we pray that you will be with Elder Julian Turner as he brings to us a message that you're filling for us the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit's presence will be felt. And that you'll bless the words that you've given him to share this evening, this afternoon. And so we ask that you be with us all, that you'll bless us, and we thank you for the many blessings. Please bless prayer retreat ministries and bless all those who are coming and those who are on their way. We ask for this in the worthy, precious name. Jesus, Amen. God is good. Not all the time. God is good. I remember when we prayed before going out yesterday. It was snowing in the morning and it was raining. But we prayed and God answered our prayers. Amen. Amen. Now there's something that impressed me this morning. And it's the fact that God confirmed it that the work will be finished. You know, as we were out today, I looked around, and the majority of the workers were ladies. It's as if God is saying to me, look, if men refuse, you know, God called men to lead the church, amen, and to lead the work. But if men refuse, God is showing me that he will we use ladies to finish this. When this movement started, the majority were men. There was one female among the men. And we saw where God used her mightily. I believe that the enemy is trying to distract the ladies by calling them to become pastors and elders to positions that God didn't ordain for them. I believe that's, that's a distraction. God has called you to the mission field. Ellen White says God will use ladies to Christianize the world. Are you listening to me? So as a word of encouragement to the ladies, God will use you. And I also want to encourage the men. Let us get involved. Take up your position. And let's work together so that this work can be finished. Amen. 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 Now, today I'm going to speak about the chain of faith. We looked at the anchor, which is what? The investigative judgment or the sanctuary message. Amen. And I said that if you have an anchor, but there's no chain which attaches to the vessel, the anchor is useless. So what am I saying? If you have the truth in your head, but your faith is not strong enough to hold on to Christ when the crisis comes, then that truth means nothing. Am I making sense? And so I'm speaking to us about the chain of faith. The famous text in the Bible, which we like to quote, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. You can preach this sermon with me, right? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. It says, now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So let me break this down. You want to purchase a property. So we're looking at this in a natural sense, in a literal sense. You want to purchase a property. You're now sitting at the desk of the, um, the estate agent. And they're saying, what is your proof to show that 
you have the means to acquire this pro property. Now, the substance to your hope of acquiring that property is the fact that you have the money in the bank. So the money or the currency, that's the substance. Are you, are you with me? But in the context of the scripture here, he's saying that, look, without money, faith becomes a currency for the things that you're seeking to acquire. Am I making any sense, friends? Faith is what? The, the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of what you cannot see. Let us pray. Loving Lord, our Father and our God, I invite you now to fill this room with your presence. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. I pray that our minds will be clear. I pray, Lord God, that you may settle my being so that as you speak through me, my words will come forth with clarity. Lord, speak to the hearts of your people. Forgive me of my sins. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So in the book of Luke, if you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, the book of Luke chapter 2, and we're looking at verses uh, 31 to, to verse 33. Now, the disciples had an argument among themselves about who shall be the greatest in the kingdom. Even though Jesus had already said to them, look, I am going to Jerusalem where I will be mistreated. I'm going to Jerusalem where they will do all manner of evil to the Son of Man. But it seems like this they had missed what Jesus was trying to tell them. Jesus was trying to prepare their minds for the crisis that was coming. Amen? So when he said this to them, it's as if the enemy had, had taken away that word that Jesus was trying to impart to them and filled their minds with worldly greatness. They were looking for worldly greatness. And so as they discussed, what they were saying is, look, who shall be the greatest in his kingdom? And for them to determine who would be the greatest, it means that they must have been comparing themselves with, with each other. Are you listening to me say it? Jesus says, look, this is what the Gentiles do. If you want to become great, you must first become the servant. And beloved friends, my attitude is that of a servant. Because when I read the Bible with the mind that Jesus is the greatest above, you, there, there's no limit to Jesus' greatness. And if Christ came down and became a humble servant to fallen humanity, I take that as my example. And I always put my, myself in the position of the servant. If I'm called to a higher office, glory be to God. Amen? Amen. You know, when, when they asked me to, to be the first elder at my church, I prayed about it. And I said, God, if this is your will, I will accept. I tell them to give me some time to pray. And it took me two weeks. I said to the pastor, look, I can go anytime. Because I have my project that I'm working on in Jamaica. So I'm back and forth and I can leave anytime. I explained it to him. And he came back to me and he said, you can still have the office. So I took that as a sign from God. And there were some things that was on its way into the church. And because of what I stood for and stood up against it, it was prevented. So I believe that God has placed me in that position. Amen. To remind his people of what he requires of them. Friends. Without holiness, the Bible says that we cannot see God. 
Amen? And so, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, as Jesus was speaking to them about the kingdom, it's as if Jesus does suddenly switch the argument. And in verse 31, we saw him saying, um, in verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith will not fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy virtue. Peter replied, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both to prison and to death. This is how Peter replied to Jesus. Now I want us to put ourselves in this story. A crisis is coming. Amen? And Jesus is seeing this crisis and he's seeing that when the crisis comes, the disciples will be scattered. And he saw Peter denying him three times. And so he said, Peter, look, I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. Beloved friends, the disciples walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They were trained by Christ. A, deg a degree is normally how many years? Three years. Three years. So they were well educated as it relates to the gospel work. Are you listening to me saying that? These men went out preaching the gospel. They, 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 they ministered to the sick. They cast out demons. It appears as if they had a close relationship with Jesus. Some of them left their employment. Some of them forfeited the possibility of inheriting the family business. Are you listening to me, saints? They went with Jesus into full-time ministry. But when the crisis came, everyone who thought that these were real Christians, these were men, if everybody has denied Christ, not Peter. But when the crisis came, Peter was here heard using unclean language to prove that he wasn't a Christian. The Bible tells us, beloved friends, that Peter said, I have never met him in my life. Now imagine if that was the son of law. They would have accepted the mark of the beast. I'm talking about men who were well experienced in the work. Men who were mentally qualified. And Jesus prayed for them that their faith will not fail. Peter denied Christ. The disciples were nowhere to be found. The Bible says they forsook him. They left Jesus, Ellen White says, to tread the winepress alone. Jesus said to them in Gethsemane, guys, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. I feel as if I am about to die. He said to them, look, watch and pray. That's an instruction. Are you listening to me? I keep emphasizing the importance of prayer. Jesus said to them, guys, listen, I know you have a zeal. The spirit is willing, but guess what? The flesh is weak. And so, no matter how we feel as if we are ready for the work, Jesus is saying to us, the flesh will fail you. Don't go to work in your flesh. Are you listening to me, saints? And so, friends, Jesus had to tread the winepress alone. There was no one to pray for him. The Bible says he fell on his face three times. And he was asking his father to take the cup away from him. Jesus came down here to die for humanity. But when the crisis came, 
The Bible says he was asking God, God, don't let me go through with this. Is there another way? No, we talk about the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus, friends, is when you don't feel like doing something, but you will do it with any heart because it is God's will. And so Jesus prays, prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. You know why Jesus went through and, and became victorious? Because he prayed. The disciples fell asleep because they did not pray. Are you listening to me, saints? No matter how qualified we are, no matter how, zeal, how much zeal we have, if we are not following the instructions step by step, we are going to fail. The message is for me. I'm preaching, but this message is for me. God has given me specific instructions to follow. And if we're not following them, I can promise you, you will fail. You know, Ellen White says, Jesus couldn't see beyond the portals of the tomb. He thought that the separation was to be eternal. Are you listening to me, friends? And despite of, of how he felt and what he thought, he still went through because he came to do his father's will. Are you listening to me say, you and I will get to that place where we will be tested. I you know God reveals something to me. Because I'm saying, if God knows everything, why does he need to test us? The Lord revealed to me, it's nothing to do with you or to do with me because I know everything. But guess what? The entire universe is watching. He said that this little planet is a spectacle. Yeah. And the angels are watching. The unfallen worlds are watching. Are you listening to me, saints? And so God will use us to vindicate his courage. I'm saying to us that we will be tested to show the universe that God can use the weakest of the weakest to vindicate his character. And so, friends, when the Bible says the sin of the whole world was upon Christ, God will allow the whole world to be against us. The hatred, the anger, the demonic powers will be against the weakest of humanity. Are you with me? And before that happens, it's as if God is bringing us to the center stage. Are you listening to me? And before he can bring us to the center stage, guess what he needs to do first? He needs to clear the stage. And so he will shake the church. Those who are not genuine will step aside. And it's as if God is showing off and he's saying, look, universe. I have people down here who will stand for me, come for me. So it will clear the stage. So the time of trouble is not something for us to be worrying about. It's something for us to look forward to because we're about to vindicate the character of God. Are you listening to me, friends? And so look, some of us, you might not feel that strong now, but through faith, we can do all things. Some of us will have to get to the mountain. The Bible says, no, the, the spiritual prophecy says we will leave the country. We will be driven, actually, from our country homes to the mountain. And you know, God has a sense of humor. I ask God, why will you take us to the mountain? You know what the Spirit says to me? Sometimes I wonder if it's my own mind. But God has a sense of humor. It's as if the voice said to me, you're getting ready for takeoff. <laughs> I'm bringing you to the highest point because you're getting ready to take off in the kingdom of Zion. Are you listening? <laughs> Friends, we are not going to the mountain to struggle. The character would have been formed already. Amen? Amen. You know, the disciples, when they were beaten, 
have to preach anymore Christ. The Bible says they rejoice because they, they, they thought they were worthy to suffer for him. Are you with me? Some of us will, will, will develop this mindset where we would look forward to be killed for Jesus Christ. Amen. We will consider it an honor to be a martyr for Christ. That's the mindset that we will have. And so I'm saying to us, the faith of Jesus endures all things. Amen? Amen. And so the question to us is this. When God shakes the church, will your anchor hold? The song says, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold your wings of strength. Mm -hmm. When the strong tides lift mm -hmm. and the cable strain, will your anchor drift and will it burn with me? You know, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about surrendering all to Jesus, there should be no weak link in your chain. Everything must be on the altar of sacrifice. Amen? So if you're, if you're strong in one area, but you're weak in the next, don't focus on where you're strong. Focus on the weakest point where you can develop that side of your character. Someone says, what has country living has to do with the second coming of Christ? Country living is about developing character. You know what character represents? The righteousness of Christ. So he's taking you to the country from this comfort zone where you can what, have, a, have an opportunity to develop some character that will, re will reflect the righteousness. Pray for me, friend. You know, when I stand here, there's a struggle. Sometimes I struggle to get the words out. This is how serious the battle is. I'm telling you. Sometimes I sometimes I come here and I'm shaking. I don't know why. I don't feel, I, I, it's not as, as if I'm afraid. Are you with me? Because I will come anyhow. But sometimes it's as if there's a struggle. I'm struggling to get the words out. And that's why I always ask the ask person to pray for me. Because I believe that God has given me a special assignment. Someone once says to me, you know, when you preach, it, it, it does something to me. It, it just, it just, not, I, I don't know. It's as if something is just churning inside. That's what the person, and that man went and he got baptized. And he died shortly after getting baptized. So that encouraged me to continue praying. I never like coming to the front like Ella said. I don't like, when I was out in the world, it's a different story. Because <laughs> I would be in the middle of the dance floor dancing. I wasn't shy. I used to be what they call a DJ or a, um, a, an artist, a local act. So I used to be the, the entertainer at the um at the at the um the, the school. Uh, what do you call it? Huh? The school. You know, the school is a what? No, like the school have a concert, like a leaving. I would be the one to go up and sing and DJ and make, and make lyrics and you know. <laughs> And by doing that, they, they, they used to see me as an entertainer. So I just accepted it. So anywhere I go, they will give me the mic. And I will go up and I sing and do whatever. Right? So I wasn't shy in the world. But when it comes to doing it in church, I find it a struggle. And I used to run away from it. But then God called me. I heard God speaking to me. Amen. I called him to preach the gospel. Amen. I, listen, this is so serious. It is. I went to the pastor. And I said, I heard God saying that he has called me to preach the gospel. I just joined the church, just came into the church. The pastor said, why do you know what is involved in this? Because I don't speak much. And he couldn't see me as a preacher. So he decided to send three others on the course and le left me out. But when the other pastor came, I said the same thing to him. And he sent me to study their preaching. And I went and I studied. When I preached, it was confirmed. The, those who were considered to be the judge, they all stood up. And they all was like, wow, I've never heard anything like this. So that confirmed to me 
that someone wants to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And so, friends, we're talking about the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things that you cannot see. Jesus is saying to us that if you desire to have a country home, faith is your currency. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? You don't need to have money in the bank. He's saying that if you have faith, that is the currency that will pay for it. I've heard testimonies where individuals have, have testified and said that, look, they have no money in the bank, but they went to your property. And as soon as they stepped on the land, the Holy Spirit said to them, this land will be yours. They said to the person who went to do the viewing, no, the person said to them, no, they said to him, God says this land is mine. They said, the person said, do you want to start a transaction? The person says yes. And they signed the documents. But there was no money in the bank. Are you listening to me, friend? There was no money in the bank. And guess what? Today, that property... I'm talking about over 100 acres of property in America. I myself am a living testimony of that. The property that I now have in Jamaica, I paid nothing for it. I went in. I have a house and another property which I'm now trying to sell because I get a, I got a better property. Are you with me? And the property that I have now, I said to God, no, in my mind, I believe it's not the Holy Spirit. It's as if I was saying, if I can get a place in that location, it will be more suitable for country living. Because where I am now, you can see your neighbors. Are you with me? And guess what? The property that I imagine, if I could own in that area, belonged to my great grandfather, my grandmother's. But I didn't know it existed. The grand aunt said to me, you can take and have the property. I offered her some money. She said, no, we cannot sell it. It belongs to us, my family. And she gave me the property, friend. The property is surrounded by mountains. So as I looked at the mountains, I said, one day I'll have to run to those mountains. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> we talk about being the final John the Baptist. There's what we call a locust tree on that property. You know locust, sister? There was a locust tree yeah. on that property. And I said, God, this is the property. So faith is the currency Amen. for the things that you're hoping for. Amen? Amen? And so friends, the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is a substance. Verse 2 says, by this the elders obtained a good report. So it wasn't just any type of faith, right? By this they obtained a what? A good report. The Bible says, by faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So even from that time, the righteousness by faith is, is what saves us. Amen. So when the Bible says that Noah moved with fear, he couldn't see a flood coming because he had never seen rain before. But God says that there is a flood coming. And by faith, he believed. And so he moved and he prepared an ark for the saving of his house. God desires for the entire family to be saved. Amen? Amen. But then he expects us to move by faith, even though we cannot see the possibility of a flood coming, even though there's no possibility of a Sunday law coming, he expects us after being warned to move by faith. Amen? Amen. And so, friends, the Bible says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inher inheritance, the Bible says he obeyed. So God says, Abraham, come. He didn't know where he was going. 
but he obeyed anyhow and he went out. And guess what? The Bible says he inherits that land as an inheritance. God expects us to move by faith, to view properties even though there's no money. And if you have sufficient faith like Abraham, guess what? That might just become your inheritance. Mm -hmm. Friends, no money is needed. All God expects us to have is faith. Amen? Amen? And so the Bible says, and listen, we will be tested. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham, when he was trying, offered up his only begotten son. What does that mean to us? Sometimes, well, let, me, let me say this first. Isaac was given to Abraham. Now, Abraham was saying, it's time for you to give me back Isaac. He didn't hesitate. He didn't even tell Sarah what God had said to him because he knew what would happen. Are you listening to me? Now, listen to this carefully. We believe in the message of country living, right? Now, if God had given you a husband, God knew that the time would come when you would get this message. Well, now it's time to move when your husband is saying no. Your children are saying no. Did God give you your children? Yes. He knew that the time would come. So what God expects us to do is give our husbands and our children back to him. You say, oh, how do you do that? Get down on your knees. God, you have asked me to move, but they're not ready. So I'm giving them back to you in prayer and plan the move. Are you listening to me, friends? God asked for Isaac, the one who was the son of promise. Without Isaac, there would be no Israel. Are you listening to me, friends? He says, give him back to me. And the Bible says, by faith, Abraham gave him back Isaac. Give your husband back to God. Husbands, give your wives back to God. Are you listening to me, friends? Because the crisis is coming. And when it comes, it would have been too late. You know what? I came to a camp meeting before here. And I heard someone shared a testimony. A couple shared a testimony. And they said that there was a leaf. There was no, no affiliation with the Seventh-day Adventist church. They weren't even Christians. But someone put a leaflet through the door, inviting them to a campaign. And they went. The Holy Spirit led them. They went. Accepted the Adventist message. Then came the country living message. So they, would, they decided to be faithful to God. So they decided now to move to the country. I believe they lived in Coventry or somewhere. And they said when they got ready to move to the country, their son said he's not going. Wasn't in the church. Wasn't even a Christian. But they decided to move anyhow. Listen to this carefully. They moved. The son followed them shortly after. This is the man who said he's not going. I'm saying that God will test us. He will allow us to be tested. They moved, friends. The son followed Today is a missionary for Christ. Yeah. His testimony is that if mom and dad had not moved, I would have been lost forever. Are you listening to me? Abraham was tested. You and I will be tested. What we have to make sure is that God is speaking to us. If God tells you to move and your husband said he's not coming, you better move. Because your move might just save him. Are you listening to me? No, I didn't call any of the animals into the ark. God just said to build the ark. That's your responsibility. You don't need to go chasing lions. Just make the ark. And the Bible says God led them into the ark. Humanity was there watching animals going into the ark. And when the flood came, Human beings perished and dumb animals made it into the ark of safety. The Bible says, by faith, Rahab wasn't born a Jew. But by faith, she what? A 
accepted and she perished not with the unbelievers. Friends, there are Seventh-day Adventists who will not accept this message. Publicans and prostitutes will enter the kingdom of God ahead of Seventh-day Adventists. It happened to the Jews. Not only was Rahab's name mentioned on the list of the faithful, her name is in the genealogy of Christ. Okay, right. I'm talking about an Allah. Some of us will perish with unbelievers because we choose not to obey what God says. And this is why I'm emphasizing we need to be praying. This is how we hear God's voice. I can't tell you move to the country. That's not my responsibility. All I can tell you is that the time is now. Your duty is to pray to God and ask him where and how. Because the time is now as we heard last night. Amen? And so friends, let us not perish with unbelievers. If God says move, the couple moved and they saved their son. The man is a missionary today. On fire. And so Jesus asked the question. When the son of man returns. Will he find faith. On the earth. The answer is yes. He will find faith. But not in the churches. That preaches not the truth. Not in the churches. Where they only preach precious truth and the prosperity gospel. Someone said, but we don't preach as, as Adventists. We don't preach prosperity gospel as Adventists. Yes, we do. Because we tell our children, go to school, get a degree, get a nice job, and live comfortable. That's the prosperity gospel. The present truth says, prepare for the time of trouble. There is a time of trouble coming such as never was since there was a nation. Are you listening to me, friends? We're living in a time of preparation. We need to get ready now before Jesus comes. And so, those who believe in the gospel are in the sanctuary message. Also believes in victory over sin. Just notice people in the church who reject this message. They believe that they will be coming, committing sin until Jesus comes. But if you accept the gospel as it relates to the sanctuary, then you automatically you believe that you can overcome sin. And those whom God will use to vindicate his character will have the victory over sin. I told you before that it, would be, it will be divinity and humanity blended together. And divinity cannot sin. <clears throat> and so Jesus will find faith when he returns. The gospel is keeping the commandments of God and having the faith of Jesus Christ. The three Hebrew boys, they kept the commandments and they had the faith of Jesus Christ. You know what the word faith, the, the word faith comes from the Greek word, pistis. It means believe, trust, and confidence. The three Hebrew boys, not only did they believe, not only did they trust in God, but they were, they were confident. They, they, they said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. desire remind me, they didn't even address him as king. They were so confident, they said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, listen to this. We will not. Worship an idol. And if you choose to throw, throw us in the fire and, and God decides not to, to, to rescue us, we still will not worship that idol. That is confidence. This is what you call holy boldness. And this is what God is looking for. Amen? Amen? Yes. Friends, we need the faith of Jesus, not just to have faith in Jesus. It's different when you have the faith of Jesus. 
I'm talking about the same faith that was manifested in Gethsemane. The one that Jesus felt like he was about to die. The one that caused the, 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 the cough to tremble in his hand, as Ellen White would put it. But he still chose to please his father. I'm talking about that kind of faith. If you don't have that faith, you're not going to go to the country. Because the devil will send somebody to discourage you. And sometimes it's the very person that sleeps on your pillow. But it's a test. Because God gave you that man. And God don't like divorce. What he has put together, he says, let no man break asunder. And so God knew that the country living message was coming. And that you would accept it. So don't believe that God will break your relationship. Or you have to put your foot in the water. Start packing. When he asks you, where are you going? I'm going to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, you can be also. <laughs> Are you listening to me, friends? No, it's serious. If you don't move, they will not move. You have to make your move. But make sure that you're listening to God's voice. Because Ellen White says, we are not to make any hasty, immature move. You have to make, make sure that you're being guided by the Holy Spirit. Because if a man comes and tells you to move, and, it, and it's not God who spoke, that will destroy your family. So God wants a one-to-one -one communication with you. Amen. And he will tell you what to do. I said to you before, I didn't want to go to Jamaica. But I believe that's where God wants me. Are you with me, friends? And I moved, and God prepared a way. God opened the way. And now I am in the country. I'm a visitor here in the UK. <laughs> I'm a visitor. So, friends, as I close... The Bible says, just one more thing before I close. You know, in um, Hebrews 11, verse 3, the Bible says, by faith, we understand that the world's yeah. the universe were, was created. Amen? Yeah. So you think about all the planets. He's, Paul says, all these things that you see, they were created by the word of God. That's how much power the word of God has. Let me, let me bring it a bit closer. Look at our solar system. It is said that Jupiter is about a thousand times bigger than the Earth. Am I speaking the truth, Ella? Correct me if I'm wrong. Then it is said that the sun is even more larger than Jupiter. And all of this was made by the word of God. If you look up into Orion, these clusters of stars, Little juice, the super giant planet. And this is why scientists are baffling because they think that God is a man. And they said, How oh, can a man create all this? It is impossible. But God is not a man, beloved friend. The Bible says He is a spirit. Are you reading? And, and Jesus said, The words that I speak, they are spirit. And so it was by us, His spirit, that He created the universe. So if God can create all of that, can he not create a country home for you? Yeah. Come on, friends. And this is why the Bible says, only a fool will say that there is no God. Only a fool will doubt that God can provide for them. David said the heavens declare the glory of God. You know that the heavens preach it, the, the, the three angels' messages. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his and the world. Day unto day do it. And night unto night show it. There is no language. The heavens is speaking in show. If you're listening. <laughs> are you listening to me, friends? The heavens are speaking of the glory of God. What, what is the first angel's message? Fear God. When you look up, it says, look, this man is great. Fear him. Give glory to him. Worship him. And we can say today, because in our office, judgment is come. The heaven declare the glory of God. It's preaching the gospel. But Jesus says, my sheep hears my voice. And I know them. And they do what? They follow me. So not everyone belongs to Jesus. Only his sheep. 
hears his voice. The sheep don't need to see him because they see him by faith and they follow him. And he says that none of them shall perish. I give them eternal life and no man can pluck them out of my hand. Peter sh shook when the crisis came, but there was a connection between him and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me, friend? And if you read the scripture um, carefully, it says, when you are converted, that's prophecy. Mm -hmm. You're not converted, no, but when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Peter failed because he wasn't converted. Mm -hmm. But because of the prayer that Jesus prayed, he became converted and he strengthened his brethren. Amen? Amen. Friend, if you're still not sure and conscious of it, when you're converted, you will move. Are you listening to me? Because when you understand what is coming, Ellen White says there's no pen that can describe the magnitude of the crisis that is coming. I said to you that God will use you to show the universe that there are faithful people on planet Earth who are ready to vindicate his character. Amen? Amen. And so let me leave you with this promise. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 and verse 11, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. And some of us were asking, how oh, quick is quickly? Well, it means as quick as possible. So why is quickly taking so long, Jesus? It's because it is not my will for anyone to perish. I want to save your entire family. I want to save your husband and your children. I want to save you. It is not my will for any to perish, but I'm coming as soon as possible. Amen? And the Bible finishes by saying, let no man take your crown. And so, friends, I believe that the times that we're living in, we need to be anchored in Christ. Our, our faith needs to be connected to Christ who is in the most holy place. Amen? Amen? That is the truth that we need to be anchored in. The sanctuary message, Christ's ministry in the most holy place. And if you go back to Leviticus chapter 23, it tells you, it gives you the duty that is expected of, of us as Jesus is ministering in the holy place. The Bible says we are to what? Afflict our souls. Make an offering by fire, meaning that the Holy Spirit must be in the vessel. Amen? And do no work. Ellen White says, allow nothing to absorb our attention except from the preaching of the three angels' messages. So if you have a job, he expects you to preach the three angels' messages to your colleagues. Amen? And if you're preaching the three angels' messages in your workplace and it comes to it where the, where, the, where the manager says you can't stay here any longer, then God is trying to move you on to somewhere else. That's the faith that we need. Amen? Mm -hmm. So friends, as I leave you this message, let us not just allow this week to pass us by mm -hmm. and then it's business as usual. Amen? Amen? I have made a sacrifice to stand here to speak to you. If I had a choice, I wouldn't be here. If I could sit there and listen to the preachers preach, I would be comfortable with that. Are you listening to me? But God has laid something on my heart to tell you that you need to develop the faith of Jesus. Because when the crisis comes, it will shape the church. And if you're not anchored in Christ, you're going to be shaken up. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
want to thank God for such a timely message. And God is speaking through his spirit and through all his servants here. The text says the spirit is speaking expressly. And we're given the, the exhortation in Revelation. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Our custom before we go for the physical food. Shall we pray? Maybe in truth, God may seal this message in our hearts. That the fowls of the air. Satan and his demons will seek every opportunity to snatch the convictions that were read, you know? So let's pray for one another. Pray for faith. I want the faith of Jesus. Faith that shall not fail. Those severely tried. Sister, I want to say to controversy that we will need the faith that will stand the test. Amen. So as we say, if you want to pray as an individual, please do so. Pray with a friend or family member, spouses, or pray together, or with the brother or the sister. Let's commit ourselves to it. Look, sir, the disciples say to the Lord, increase our faith. Should be our prayer. Amen. Shall we make use of an uh, in number four? Is it four seven three? Sweet
But um, yeah, let's try and do everything before the Sabbath comes. Amen. Amen. Uh, those who like some iron boards, uh, please. I'm sure some people are asking where do we find iron boards for ironing. Um, if you go to the reception area, they will show you. Uh, it's best that they show us, you know, instead of us just picking things, going in and out of storerooms. I'm sure there's somebody that can do it for you. Yeah. Amen. And let's uh, obviously let's not leave it. I find this flat on my clothes. Uh, disaster. God bless you, brother. Let's uh, dispress and the stores are open as well. I think there's more things to see in the back. And let's get some more spiritual tools in the back. I've seen some wonderful pens. I bought myself one. You were saying, God is my light. I said, This one is good. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. Brethren online, and let's meet again at 6 p.m. for the Vespers. Amen. Amen.